So I learned on the student to the to this lecture and this course number is MA four one two linear algebra. Okay, and this is lecture number twenty seven. Okay, so now, um, okay, so we have already discussed about uh, the Grand Smith orthogonalization process, okay, and we showed that every finite dimensional inner polar space has a orthogonal basis. Okay, now today we will discuss uh, one more very important property of linear operator. Um, it's called that uh, for finite dimensional vector space, it has something called adjoint operator. Okay. Okay, before uh, uh, before uh, going so, we just want to discuss another theorem which will help us to actually find out or or define that joint. And this theorem is called Marie's uh, Emerson theorem. Same. Yes, sir. Theorem. I mean, I mean, I'm doing for special case for find the vector space. Okay, the general theorem is more general and that I am not discussing that you will learn in, uh, in the course of uh, functional analysis. Okay, so uh, what does this theorem tell you? This theorem tells you that okay, so let me write down definite um, that statement. So let um, uh, the your inner product be a finite dimensional inner product space okay over a field some field okay yes and you have a linear functional say for example some linear functional g belongs to this term okay um, then there exists a uh, so, so this linear transformation linear functional can be represented by the inner product how so then um, there exists uh, i mean uh, so, so i should say here so this is a symbol of unique so maybe i can write down unique also Unique um, say y belongs to v. Uh, y belongs to v says that what happens is that your the functional g that can be written as in terms of inner product inner product of x y okay is for all x belongs to v okay so what does that mean that means the theorem is telling that uh, every on a finite dimensional inner product space, every linear functional can be represented by uh, this type of inner product. Okay, so that's why it's so important that uh, you so once you know this theorem, so linear functionals are nothing but the inner product with with uh, some specific uh, element. So this you can write down sometimes. This is this is this why you depend on z. Sometimes people also write down this is actually gy or uh, yg whatever okay yg or gy doesn't matter okay but this theorem uh, is not true in general in finitesimal vectors in finitesimal inner product space so in general suppose you have in finitesimal space um, having inner product this may or may not be true and the case where it is true you need some property is called property of completeness okay that you will learn in again um, function analysis and those in our space are called Hilbert space okay and this is nothing but a complete network space okay but for us um, uh, we will do the only the first time of finite dimensional vector in our product space okay and uh, so how do you prove this kind of theorem so proof now what is the our advantage our advantage is that whenever I have a finite dimensional in product space I always have a orthogonal basis right so uh, we start with the orthogonal basis. So let 
Uh, so we have something B, which is B1, B2, Vn, B and no, orthonormal basis, orthonormal one. This is of that you know, plus plus B, which is having dimensions say, n, this is finite, so I can assume n, okay, for some n. And once I have a basis, then I will define I have to find, and obviously, my g is given, and so g is already given on g star, okay, element of g star. Now I will define my y uh, such a way that. Uh, it will actually uh, it will actually uh, it's taking value of the value of g and how do i define so i define so now define uh, the vector y the y is defined by summation uh, g of this on this basis vector bi over bi i equal to 1 to n and then bar uh, see, see, this is a map from V to F and F can be complex of right? So, so I am taking bar. In the case F is real vector, I mean, if we say real in a product space, then obviously bar doesn't have any effect, right? Then in general, you define this. And now I am claiming that this is the Y, which actually is actually we need for GX. This is the Y. Now, how do I prove this thing? So, uh, now obviously, uh, first of all, um, uh, okay, so this is given that G is linear, right? G is from B to F is a linear function, means it's a linear map also. So, this property also uh, I will use somewhere. But now, uh, with the help of Y, let me define another function. So, define, um, you know, say, H of X. Or rather, each from V to okay. So let me each on uh, LV. So linear operator on or rather, oh, it's not linear operator. Each on V star. Okay. So so another linear function. And how do I define? So I'm defining this H by um, H of X is nothing but uh, a product of x or y okay and uh, what i do i put that a equal to g then obviously g will be in a product of x y right this is the proof so given g you need to find out y such that g of x can be in a product of x y right for all every x what do you do so you start with in a uh, what is that term i orthogonal basis of this final vector in the plus space is a beta a b and then you are defining y in terms of that linear combination of basis vector of b like summation i equal to n to n g b i bar and b i now with the help of this y we define another uh, linear functional such that h uh, is taking value x and is taking uh, the image will be in a product x of y now what is my claim? My claim is that uh, claim that uh, is equal to g. Okay, this is the claim. Then obviously, so thus the uh, once we prove is equal to g, then g of x will be in a product of x. Right? Now to prove two maps are equal, it is enough to prove that they are equal on the basis that we already proved long back ago. Right? Now let us prove that h and g they they are equal on the basis. So how do we prove? So you start with evaluating h at the basis vector, say uh, v of j, and then by definition this will be uh, in a product of uh, v j comma y, right? But we know the definition of y, so definition of y is nothing but summation i equal to one to n g of v i bar and v i, right? Clear. Now we will use the property of inner product and that tells us that um, uh, okay so that will tell us that it will be some uh, i equal to i equal to 1 to n and then g of this will come out g of v i bar and then whole bar because this is in the second argument right and the inner product with 
vj will be vi right now whole bar means this is the original thing so that will come said i equal to 1 to n g of vi and in a product vj um, yeah so so this is i in a product vj and vi right now because uh, this is orthonormal basis so this in a product will only survive when i equal to j otherwise it will not survive now when i equal to j it will become g of vj and in a product of vj vj which is equal to 1 right so as uh, in a product of vj vi this is nothing but delta i j right product of delta okay so what does that mean that means uh, h on the basis vector coincide with the g and thus so thus uh, g of x equal to h of x equal to the number of the bit. so i this is for all x belongs to v once it, it, it's coincide on the basis vector it, it is true for every vector right okay so so this is this theorem is very important and it's called rich representation theorem and this is obviously special case of that the original i mean the general theorem tells about that whenever uh, a inner product space may not be finite if it has some property for completeness property or rather no space or Hilbert space then uh, every inner functional you have uh, it can be represented by inner product okay but that you will learn in functionalities course uh, so now uh, obviously uh, this is the proof of that uh, existence of such y but how do you know this y is unique so for uniqueness okay uh, for that you also need to prove uniqueness so so let uh, so y that belongs to me such that g of x got to i mean another y does okay so so let me write them both this is okay and this is obviously for all x belongs to me and that is that means that uh this is in a product of x y minus y bar this is zero right for all x belongs to me and that means y equal to y bar a y test so that means that this kind of y is actually unique so for every such linear functional you have one such y which actually map uh, which actually tells you that this is okay so this is kind of unique right so this this y generally some people also write down y g also then to mention that this is dependent on the linear map g linear function g okay and in fact you can you can actually you can actually find uh, so one may so this is the end of the proof obviously but one can actually define so uh, a map from uh, say v to v star so so one can define I, i'm assuming that dimensional v is a fine dimensional so that means this is also fine dimensional okay uh, in this case what you can do you can you can send y to g y okay for every y you can define such map and on vice versa for every g you can define you can have a y such that this is g y right okay so um so now now uh what's the reason define psi of y for example of y i see that this is psi uh this psi map so psi is and isomorphism for for the case final sum of this is iso morphism of v to mr which is kind of canonical in this sense okay so so in general if you don't have inner product we see that uh, v is canonical isomorphic to double dual right but here you can do it for inner product space find as an so it is possible okay kind of one can we find some of them so this is homework you can easily do it this is five size so five is linear obviously this is uh, 
very obvious or so. Um, or rather, I think, or, um, yeah, so, so if not y, then y bar, okay, so that, that you check. This is y or y bar. Uh, sorry, uh, g of i. Yeah, so y, y on, yes, y, not y bar. Okay, so uh, uh, so now um, maybe we can give some example of such um, uh, an easy representation. Okay, so uh, you, you you choose some some map say maybe so suppose maybe something say um, okay say. So R2, so that will be easier to understand. Now you ch choose a map from B star on B star. What is that? So, um, so this is so taking the value of R2 to say, so this is what R I am taking. Okay, the field. <coughs> Sorry. So the of uh, maybe you say x y and you are sending it to something uh, x plus y. For example, okay, and uh, so so if you send this thing to this, obviously it's a linear map, right? So um, you can use this kind of linear map. Now, uh, so so this is clear. Now, what I am to do, I do that uh, for this uh, G, you have actually one uh, Y, which actually okay, so. Maybe x, let me write down x1, x2, other way you have problem of understanding of y, okay. x1 plus x2, okay. Now, um, now I am taking my basis B is uh, say standard basis, which is also um, orthogonal basis, right? So this is a basis of, of R2 over R. Which is also orthonormal, obviously. Orthonormal. Okay. So now, with respect to this basis, uh, what will be y? So, by definition, what was the y? y was y is summation, uh, you recall, summation i equal to 1 to a. See, in general, I am writing just to recall again. You right, but now the over R, so this bar is not there, right? So this is the general definition. So what do we do? So for first one, try to find out what is G of V1 into V1 plus G of V2 into V2. So we don't need bar because this is real vector, real in a space, right? Now what is G of V1? So what does G say to V1? So you see when this is V1, the first one, this is V2. Now when you plug this, uh, plug this v value of V1 inside G, the it will be sent into 1. So when V2 was sent into 1, right? So, so this is Y is nothing but uh, V1 plus V2, both are 1. This is 1, this is 1. So Y is the vector V1 plus V2. Okay. This is uh, writing, yes. This is vector V1 plus V2. So why is the vector v1 plus v2 and uh, what, is, what does that mean? So um, so uh, v1 is nothing but uh, 1, 0 and v2 is nothing but 0, 1. So this is actually 1, 1. So y, y is nothing but v is element up to this vector. Okay. And uh, done. So now we check that this is actually uh, your with your x of g of x is uh, sorry x1 x2 whatever yeah so this you can actually find out in terms of basis vector uh, in terms of inner product with y so you can write this inner product of uh, x1 x2 into 1 1 uh, and see that what is that so this is nothing but 1 into 1 into, 1 into x1 into x1 plus 1 into x2 into x2 and see this is this is the original map that you got here yeah, original map okay so so the original map actually can be written as in terms of inner product is this this element so this is your y okay and that is actually matching okay 
so this is an example of reinfantation uh, now with this reinfantation will uh, help us to uh, find out there is a nice another nice operator that start with the linear operator on finite vector space of this is in a space and this kind of operator is called adjoint operator so let us now uh, try to find out what is that in terms of this theorem theorem okay so uh, um, so uh, for, for example you, you start with the finite vector space first so like um, this n dimension of the say for example say n okay I'm assuming this n it doesn't matter you can write down any anything fine okay and so this is uh, linear product space product space over the vector space a uh, over the field a okay and then you have a linear operator uh, on v so so once you have a linear operator on a finite dimension as well as space, then you can define uh, that joint. And this is, this is also a linear operator, which is unique. So then there exists, then there exists a unique uh, map, a unique function, whatever. And this function will be defined by t star from t star of this on lv so that means linear map from v to v such that this is the most important property that we take an product of px with y and the value of this will be exactly the same as the product of x with t star of y okay and that will be true for all x y belongs to me. Okay, so uh, so uh, you will have a linear map or linear operator on V that is by this nice property. The value of the product of t x with y is same as the number value of the product of x with t star y. Okay, and this kind of uh, operator for okay so this this term is called the adjoint operator or the linear operator whatever of p okay so, yeah so um so uh, obviously um if it is exists then it is unique that's obvious and uh, maybe I will tell you later, but first let us prove their existence. Yeah. Proof. So, um, so you start with the, I mean, so how do I define this star? So, I'm defining given a y, okay, let me write down that. So, let some y belongs to be the, an arbitrary element. Arbitrary vector, okay. and with with the help of this y, what I am defining, I am defining. Uh, so define my linear linear function. I am defining. Uh, so g belong to this term by by will define. I am defining my g of x is in a product to it t x comma y. Okay, so for all x belongs to v. And obviously, uh, so if I define by this thing, so this is actually on v star. Okay, so uh, so maybe I can say that. Okay, so instead of that, let me write down that v from v to f. By this, now I will show that this is on v star to by proving that this linear. Okay, so this is my claim that. V belongs to V star that I basically okay. Now, how do you prove this linear map? So, uh, what to prove to prove this linear map? So, 
So for all or for any x1, x2, v2, v and constant belonging to c1 to f, what you can do, you can define your c x1 plus x2, okay, and check that is equal to c times g of x1 plus g of x2 or not. But by definition, this is definition of g, we see this is in a product of this thing. This is in a product with t of cx1 plus x2 from y and because t is linear uh, so this will be t of c t x1 plus t of x2 from y this is as t is linear Okay, now you use the property of inner product that tells you that this is c times inner product of t x1 y plus inner product of t x2 y. Okay, but this is again by, by definition this is again g of x1 plus this is by definition g of x2. Okay. So what does that mean? That means uh, G is linear and hence this element of V star, okay. So now, uh, um, so, the, so I define a map from V to F and I prove that the map is actually linear. So that means this map is a linear map from V to F, so this is a linear function. Now we will use the least dependent theorem, so now using, now, uh, using, is representation theorem theorem there exists as some some y that belongs to V such that such that what happens is that G of X will be equal to in a product of x comma y dash for all x belongs to v right so this representation theorem tells you that you can always find out one y and this y is depending on now uh, original say so y dash depending upon now original y see i choose arbitrary y here and because of this y i find out a y dash for every y we have a y dash right and now um uh, so what does that mean? That means so so what does this mean? So this means that uh, uh, so by definition g of x equal to t of x comma y. So this has to be equal to x comma y dash for all x belongs to v. Okay. Now because this y dash depending on y, so I can easily define a map, and that map sends y to y dash. Okay. For each y, you have a y dash, right? So let us define that map. So now uh, define uh, this t star from v to v says that t star of y equal to this y dash. Given y, I define this is that y dash that coming from the least dependence on theorem, right? And so thus. Uh, one should have that thing, so that means write down in a product of uh, txy which is equal to xy dash, but xy dash is nothing but x t star y. Okay, okay, so now, but but how do you know this is linear? Map? That will be the proof. Okay, so now to prove linearity, so now my claim is that it is linear, right? Claim. Sorry, T star. T star belongs to LV. Okay. Now, how do you prove T star belongs to LV? So, you start with again to uh, so you start with six comma T star of C Y one plus Y two. I will show that this is that breaks into C time T star Y one plus T star Y two. Okay, but but by definition, this is nothing but. Um, okay, so uh, this uh, t is by definition of this, this is nothing but uh, t of x 
comma C Y one plus Y two right in a product. Okay. Now, uh, now you see that uh, we will use uh, the property in a product, and that uh, this is that this will be uh, T of X comma C Y one plus T of X comma Y two. Okay. Now again, property in a product tells you that this is nothing but C bar of x y1 okay and this is what this is you can you can use uh, the another property of also uh, you, you can use the property again and that will give you that x comma e star of y2 okay and here also you can write down the same property and that tells you give me x comma e star of y1 plus x comma t star of Right. Now again, this C bar we can take inside, and that will gives you x comma c t star of y one plus x comma t star of y two, and hence finally we have x comma c t star of y one plus t star of y two. Okay, again, this add the property of the inner product, right? So other than that means this is same as this uh, this one right because this is true for all x so this is for all x belongs to uh, v and obviously all y1 y2 also belongs to v and c belongs to f and thus t star of c y1 plus y2 nothing but c time t star y1 plus t star y2 Okay, it's the fine. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So, 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 so this this is the proof that this term belongs to L V. But I need to prove that uniqueness also. So, now uniqueness part uniqueness. So how do you prove this uh, tau we defined this star is unique? So so we choose another one. So let there exist uh, another one. Say maybe say three, three star and three dash. Both are in LV. Okay, so is that? So is that? T x y equal to x star y and also this is equal to um, x t dash y for all x and y belongs to v. Suppose this is given that t in a product t of x y is there is two such such that they are equal. But that means that x comma star y minus t dash y to be zero right this is for all for all x y belong to v and that actually tells you that this is zero in a map so t star will be equal to t dash so so they are unique actually okay so uh, this is the proof that uh, for finite tension in a product space you can always define the abstract operator okay now uh, the question is that okay so if I have t is the first argument then I can go into second argument but what about uh, let's say if I have t in the second argument so for example what about if I start with x comma t of y can I say this is t star x of y the answer is yes why because this is you can write down as the by property of a product t of y comma x Whole bar, right? Of this quantity. But uh, then again, you use the property of t star to tell you that this is nothing but bar and then y t star of x star of x, right? Okay, and again, you do the barring again. So the bar would give you that t star of x comma y 
bar and the whole bar, right? So double bar, so that means this is this star of x comma y, right? So what does that mean? That so no matter where is the first argument, second argument, when you change from one argument to one coordinate to another coordinate or argument, you can always change t to the state star to t. Okay, and this is true for all x, y belongs to infinity. Okay, so this is a very very important um, mm -hmm. very, very important observation that you can actually move t to t star in both arguments. Okay. Uh, so now um okay, so okay. Now I will give okay, so this is not true in general for Infinite vector space, uh, infinite, infinite space uh, because, um, in the vector space or infinite in the vector space because in fact, this theorem is not even true in general, right? And we use this representation theorem, so in general, you can you, you, there exists a linear operator such that the adjoint operator doesn't exist for infinite vector in the vector space. You can find out on one such example, okay? Now, um, obviously, we will give some example. And uh, before that, let me just do one more theorem, and that tells you that uh, this is kind of analog of uh, uh, the theorem when you talk about what about transpose of original linear operator, that way right? so you can talk about that joint also. So how that joint work with 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 respect to uh, basis, okay. So let me start with this again, find the final respect and a basis, okay? So let um, t, uh, rather, t this be a finite dimensional finite dimensional inner product space. Okay, uh, and you have a orthogonal basis and B, B, and ortho normal basis of B over that field F. Okay. And if you start with a linear operator on V, then uh, if uh, your T is the element of okay, which is a linear operator T on V, then that uh, if you start first the matter representation of T with respect to the basis B, and then you take uh, the uh, that adjoint of that matrix, you know, adjoint means conjugate transpose. Okay, and that will be exactly same as you first take the transpose and and do it uh, find out this matrix representation with respect to the same basis B. Okay, clear. So, so this is uh, that tells you that uh, you can do always, you can always do this kind of thing. Okay, so now, uh how do you prove this kind of theorem? So this is uh, uh, this is coming from again, as I told you that uh, when you have a finite inner product space, you have a uh, norm uh, orthogonal basis, and you can write down the the uh, you can write down the matrix representation of linear operator by this basis very easily in terms of inner product, right? Recall in the last lecture we defined this thing, so with that help we will prove it. So the proof. So you let your your basis V is of the form say V one V two V n, okay, and uh, we have uh, this matrix represent of this T is A, and the matrix representation of this star with respect to the same basis B is a capital B, okay, a bit of B, okay. Hmm. Or C maybe whatever doesn't matter. Maybe I don't see other. You may feel that too many B's. 
a D maybe no whatever it doesn't matter it's a D okay so so the, the your DC is nothing but DIJ and A is AIJ right now we recall that uh, the application of uh, application of uh, grams meet we got that you can have a basis which is orthogonal one and then you can write down every vector in terms of orthogonal basis right in particular you can write down um, that matrix is very easy right and then we will use that fact here also okay so um, what will be your dij so your dij's will be by definite i mean that we discussed last Class, this will be actually in a product with P star of this basis vector J with VI, right? VI will be actually that, but because um, okay, so now I will use that property that tells so you that this is VI, comma, P star VJ bar, right? Probably in a product. Okay, and now again I will just use the another property of this adjoint map and that tells you that uh, it's nothing but t of the i comma j whole bar right now you, you look at what was t of v i v j so this is nothing but this is a i a j i a i j will be t of v j v i right so this is actually nothing but uh, a j i and then bar but AGI bar is what? So the AGI bar is nothing but there. This is uh, this is a matrix A star that I row and jth column, right? So what does that mean? That means the I row and jth column of uh, D is nothing but uh, I row jth column of A star. So what does that mean? That means this actually means that this T star with respect to this B nothing but t with respect to b and then whole star okay so the matrix representation also kind of commutes with this adjoint matrix okay and uh, immediately you can say that uh, so this is for matrix and we know that for every such linear operator you have a matrix and for every such matrix you have a linear operator right for finding the vector space and hence, uh, what you can say, you can say that uh, you can say uh, kind of observation directly that uh, let you choose A, which is say, M N F in cosine matrix of the field F, and then obviously the left regular multiplication L A whole star. That's a left regular multiplication is again a linear map right so you can talk about the adjoint of that map and this adjoint is nothing but coming from the left regular representation of the adjoint matrix okay clear yeah, so that is coming from adjoint matrix and that, that is also obvious so um, um, why is obvious because uh, again so so this is a linear map and this linear map star symmetric so representation of this will be actually um, matrix representation of this, right? So let me write down the proper code properly. So you write down so let uh, so how this L was defined, L was defined from Fn to Fn, right? So uh, okay, so, so let uh, so you choose this something whatever this is from v1 v2 vn v v the standard order basis of fn okay and then uh, what do you do? You will do, you know that uh, this this map. We will take the matrix representation of the map with the standard basis. So this will be nothing but A. 
there is proof wrong bag ago okay and uh, once you know this then you can talk about uh, the star and then obviously in a and uh, this basis the star will be nothing but uh, a star okay and um, what is a star a star is nothing but first you take uh, so this is l so matrix representation of a star with respect to the basis b right so so what does that mean that means uh, these two so this is true for any basis Okay, whatever basis you choose, it's for any basis, and hence that tells you that L A whole star, the adjoint of this linear operator is coming from the adjoint matrix linear operator attached with the adjoint matrix. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so these are actually uh, interesting uh, theorems, and there are many property, many uh, properties of this. Uh, inner product and we can prove some of the properties okay so let us prove some of the properties and properties of this adjoint adjoint um, operator okay so so um, Number one, so uh, suppose we have say T1 and T2 to linear operator, and then if we take adjoint, so it this will be nothing but first take adjoint and then sum it. And this is again very very obvious um, uh, because uh, why is very obvious because you start with uh, you start with x comma T1 plus T2. Star of y, and by definition, this is t1 plus t2 of x comma y. Then t and t2 linear, so it will break into t1 x plus t2 x comma y, and then you can also break it into t1 x y plus t2 of x comma y. Then again, you use the property of adjoint, so x comma t1 star y plus x comma t2 star y. Okay, and hence this is nothing but x comma t1 star y plus t2 star y. That is for all x1 comes to be right, and hence c. That tells you that t1 plus t2 star equal to uh, uh, this t1 star plus t2 star. Okay. Similarly, uh, if you multiply by a constant, c with t, and then take the inner product, uh, take the adjoint, it will be uh, what is your guess? So we c right? No, this c bar. Okay. This for all C one two. Why C bar again? Uh, we start with x comma C two y, and C this will be nothing but T x comma sorry C T x comma y. Okay. Now what is C T x? So this is nothing but C times T X Y, but that nothing but C times X comma T star of Y, and then C will be in the second column then, so it, it will become in a product of X comma C bar T bar T star of Y, right? I see. Now you can easily understand that C T star will be C bar into T star. Okay. And now uh, again, so another property. So if we have t1 and t2, and then you do star, it will be nothing but t2 star t1 star. So the same proof. I'm not giving you the proof because the proof is same. Now four 
Oh, what happened if you multiply, if you join two double star? So that means three star star. And you should this is equal to D. Okay. These are the properties of it. In fact, uh, identity has the own star. It is your identity matrix, then star will be itself. Okay, so these two are same. And corresponding to these uh, things, the matrix was not the same. If you take two matrices, sum and then do the adjoint, it will be adjoint and then sum. This is the problem. Every book we have same. Okay. So you can do these properties as homework. The way I go, we can prove all those things. Okay. Okay, so I will stop here. Let's do it.